Rachel, and you've spoken to us before, and it was absolutely fabulous. And you are the uh, the guru of getting awards um, won. So I am looking forward to hearing your talk. Go for it. Thank you. Um, so yes, Rich from the awards people here. All we do at the awards people is research, write, and submit award-winning award entries for our clients. Our clients are mainly companies, a few charities in there, and a few private individuals. And we literally write everything from uh, local and regional business awards through to national and international business awards, specialist industry awards, um, and also uh, right the way through to Queen's Awards for Enterprise, um, Queen's Honour nominations. We've got a couple of OBEs and an MBE going through at the moment, um, and anything and everything in between. And why we started doing this is um, I also run a PR agency called RDZ PR. We had a client who I knew very, very well personally, who asked to tip around to his office for a coffee one day. And he started off the conversation by saying, Rach, I don't want any of that PR rubbish. And I was like, well, that's quite difficult because that's what I do. And he's like, no, no, don't want any of that PR rubbish. Uh, I want you to write our award entries for us. And he and his right hand um, lady, uh, Lauren, had had some great success early on um, entering and um, becoming shortlisted for awards. And he's a very canny man. He saw the opportunities that entering awards could give to him. And in fact, we worked together over a four year period. Um, and he quote, gave me a quote saying that uh, our entry and winning awards was one of four key strategies. It's the only one within a marketing, promotion, PR, advertising uh, area at all uh, that he uh, invested any money and time into. And those four strategies helped to move from a 10 to a 30 million pound turnover. So with that story, I got really curious and thought, well, if it can work for him, can it work for other micro and SME businesses? And uh, five years later, here we are. And yes, it can. So what I've put on this slide uh, with the title, One Powerful Strategy That Can Help You Too. Um, what I've put up. Sorry to interrupt, you're not showing any slides. Am I not? Ah, I do apologize. There we go, that's it. Got it? Perfect, sorry guys, use error. Um, so <laughs> what you can see on this slide, these are the reasons our clients have said or the outcomes our clients have said in terms of why they have entered and why more. Obviously it's different for every person, but part of the reason I really like this as a strategy for businesses is that it is flexible. So if you want to grow your business's turnover and profitability, then as an example, I've just given you where my client grew his turnover from 10 to 30 million pounds. Yes, awards, entering and winning awards can do that. It can help increase the number of clients making their way to you. It can help you to retain clients. We have several clients who only use this strategy to help retain their clients. And one who uh, is just working on a case study with them at the moment, he's never lost a client since working with us and using this as part of his client retention strategy. It can encourage new talent to knock on your door. Um, we keep reading about and hearing about the uh, terrible struggles some businesses are having in terms of recruiting new staff. Well, some, several of our clients no longer have that issue because they have CVs that have come in uh, because people want to work with award-winning businesses, agencies, etc. Um, it can help retain your team and build a sense of real pride, build team engagement and company culture, as I've put here. Uh, but it can help retain your team. Why do they want to go somewhere else working for an award-winning uh, company? It can attract external investment. We had one client whose sole reason for entering and winning awards was because he wanted to attract external investment. And in fact, he did that by sitting next to a gentleman called David at the FSB Awards uh, for the East Midlands, who, and David ultimately became a £1 million investor in his business. Um, and it can help you attract the right suppliers and external stakeholders to work with you as well so how does it do that how can i say that it does that well it's all based on client feedback but basically by entering prestigious and well thought of business awards and those words are key not all awards sadly are equal um, but entering prestigious credible well thought of awards being shortlisted let alone winning will raise your profile it will enhance your reputation amongst your target audience um, and in turn, that helps you to then achieve your objectives. It's that heightened uh, profile, it's that heightened uh, reputation. It's a clear differentiator between, um, between you and your competition.
So how does it manage to do that or why does it do that? Well, entering and winning awards, it's seen as a powerful third party endorsement. It's not you saying I am this good, um, which you should be saying anyway. And if we're not, then that's a different conversation. But it really is a powerful third party endorsement. It's somebody else has said on this day, you were judged amongst others and we found you to be the very best in whatever it is that you do. It's an external mark of approval. You're the best that we've seen. Um, and it, as I said before, it clearly differentiates you from your competition. It also has the added benefit of being able to give you an awful lot to talk about on social media as well as through marketing and PR. And this is something that a lot of my smaller clients on the PR side do struggle with, having that drip feeding of data, information, stories, news to the media. To be able to go out and say you're a finalist or you've won uh, an award and this is what the judges said about you is as good a PR press release as many others that come across my desk. But it also gives you that rich content that you can use across social media as well. So how do we do it? It's all down to the planning, particularly if you choose to do this for yourself, because everybody is time poor uh, or it seems to be nowadays anyway. So entering awards that can take anywhere from oh, I don't know half an hour to several days we think we average about half a day per award entry for our clients on average um, and that's after we've done all the research and the interviews and everything that's literally sitting down and writing them so if you don't want to miss those all important deadlines if you do want to take advantage of of, uh, of it as uh, or entering and winning awards as a, as a strategy then I suggest you use something like this. Obviously, this is simplified so that it can sit on a slide fairly decently. But literally, we use something like this in Excel for our clients. It gives them the, the deadline date so we know what we're working to. It reminds them of, of when the actual awards ceremony is because you need to be a part of that. You need to be there. That's where the, 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 the choice networking is going to be happening. It reminds people about the press releases all of which can be prepped up in advance, ready to go, just with a little change and a tweak at the end if, if you need to before you issue it out. It talks about your social media and your digital marketing so that you obviously, you in our bigger plans, it would then say what we're tweeting about or Instagram about or linking in about um, in more detail. But it also encourages you to, to talk about your awards, uh, nominations, finest positions and wins on a blog. And it reminds you, and I know this sounds funny and I sometimes get taken to task for having this on a slide, but so many of my clients, uh, my assistant David ends up having to ring because they don't have their award logo on their website or on their email footer. There is no point entering and winning awards if you're going to keep quiet about it. That's the BN all and end of all of it. So if you get your digital logo saying you're a finalist or when you get it or you're, that you're a winner, then add it to your email, add it to um, your website as soon as possible because it's, it, it helps catch people's eye. And that's the point of this process. So a simplified schedule like this or with more lines in depending on your will um, is the way that we encourage our clients to keep a track of what they need to do and when it makes sure that we don't have that last minute five to midnight on the entry deadline date uh, and we're all panicking it's all done there's no we need to panic um, so if what I've said so far is of interest to you what next I think the key thing is to clarify what it is that you actually want to achieve from entering and winning awards because if you want to use a strategy uh, this strategy to retain clients potentially the awards and the categories as importantly that you look at is going to be very different going to be very different if you want to be known as a fast-growing company so by really clarifying what it is you want to achieve from entering and winning awards is key to being able to then choose the right awards for you and the right categories for you. That then gives you the opportunity to research the options out there and there are loads. Within the UK alone, forgetting anything international, but just in the UK, I think David said that uh, he'd stopped counting at three and a half thousand awards. So there are a lot out there. However, you know, if you're not a hairdresser, you're not going to want to enter the hairdressing awards, are you? So you can take that chunk out for a start off. So it's really relatively easy to crunch down the awards that um, are meaningful and important to you. Um, but doing that with the clarity of what you're trying to achieve in your mind will make it so much easier. 
Then what I'd suggest is you really carefully look through the entry criteria for the categories that you're interested in. And at this point, be ruthless. If you can't answer the full criteria, I'd suggest quite strongly that you don't enter. Why am I saying that? Because um, I see an awful lot of clients who want to be ambitious, and that's great. But if they can't answer two of the questions at all, they are going to be on such a back foot in such a competitive environment that I'd say, why don't you wait until next year until we can prove that evidence or we can answer that question really, really well. Um, it's competitive out there. It takes time to do these things. So enter the categories and the awards that you stand as strong a chance as possible in. Yes, be a little bit ambitious by all means, but if you have big gaps in that criteria, put it to one side, have a look at something else because there will be something else out there. And then pull together your strategy, what you're going to enter and when, like the slide I gave earlier or, or more detailed. That gives you the opportunity then to, to put together or start to put together your supporting evidence. A lot of my clients, when I come to ask them for client testimonials, client case studies, even sometimes photographs and logos, they really struggle to put their hands on key items like that. We call it our awards arsenal. What are the things that you're likely to need for pretty much any award um, and have them to hand so that they're easy to find, easy to upload or easy to integrate into the document that you're, you're needing to prepare? It's a good opportunity to review, well, you know, have I got a testimony from this year or are they from two years ago? Have I got a recent case study? And if not, can I get hold of one? Doing it when you don't have the panic of a deadline looming is just so much easier than uh, all hands on deck and trying to persuade a client who's off skiing in the mountains to give you a quote and they're halfway up a mountain skiing. It's not great. So start to uh, pull that strategy together see when your deadlines are and then start working back and thinking right have I got my logo have I got an up-to-date photo where are my testimonials what are my case studies looking like and start to work on that before you need them so I just took a I appreciate we've got an international audience here, but I just had a quick look around to see what um, business awards, these are general business awards, they're not industry specific at all, were available in the UK. And some of my, my favourite ones on here that I often recommend to clients. And it starts with the FSB, which is the Federation for Small Businesses, for those who aren't familiar with it, uh, celebrating small business awards, wonderful awards. Some of the deadlines have now uh, closed because they do it on a regional basis, but some are still open to the 27th of February. Uh, so I know, for instance, the East Midlands are still open um, till 20th of February, for example. Uh, so have a look um, uh, uh, on their website, have a look at the categories and their deadlines. These awards are great. They have, the reason we like them, you don't have to be a member, you don't have to, there's no entry fee, but they do have great media links. And if you win regionally, you go through to the national finals. So two bites of one cherry, what's not to love. Um, reasonably simple to fill in as well, between three and six questions, about 200 words per answer so not too bad in terms of, of the amount of time it's going to take if you're going to do these on your own the sme national business awards has two deadline dates that you can see there the first one the 15th of march is their early bird deadline because they do charge for entry but you can get it at 20 quid cheaper if you enter before the 15th of march or it's 20 pounds more expensive if you're entering on their official deadline the 12th of may Good awards, national awards, uh, highly competitive. Um, if it was between that and the scale up awards, depending on what I was putting in and obviously where my what my story was, then the scale up awards are also fabulous awards. They are free to enter. Used to be sponsored by Amazon. Got some great categories. Anybody who is scaling up, fast growth, um, and not necessarily purely in terms of turnover. It can be in terms of class customer numbers, reach, et cetera, et cetera, products. So don't get put off thinking, oh, my turnover hasn't exponentially gone up. There are other things that they're looking at as well. Rural Business Awards, um, they're all pending their dates for this year so far, uh, but they're great. Obviously, they, as the name might imply, if you live rurally, they're great. If you're in the middle of London, no. They're not for you, but they are great if you are more rurally uh, located. And if you don't think you are, but you're not quite sure, check the detail on what classes as rural, because sometimes we have some real shocks as to what they will take as, um, as a, an entry. The Great British Entrepreneur Awards, 
we adore, we think they're great. Uh, free to enter again, a fabulous online community. We've had clients who've gone to their finalist um, networking events and come away with contracts, work, uh, new jobs, uh, all sorts. So a very vibrant community uh, who go to, to those into those awards. Great Business Awards have yet to declare all their information for this year yet. Um, but again, another fabulous award. The Local Business Awards, as the name might suggest, really drills down for businesses that want to be known locally specifically. The Institute of Directors Director of the Year Awards, like the FSB, you don't need to be a member of the Institute of Directors. There's no entry fee. And if you don't actually have the title of director, they, they will take any nomination for anybody who is holding a senior level position uh, and has decision making ability. Um, very, very prestigious. And again, win regionally, go through to the national finals. And then to round off, we have the Unbiased Trusted Professional Awards and the Business and Innovation Awards. If you are at all innovative or have innovated anything in terms of product, service, even down to customer service, through customer service, and those awards are fabulous too. Uh, so there's a little canter there through uh, some of the awards that we really love that are general business awards. There's a right variety of categories there. If you want any of these slides, let Naomi know. I'm more than happy to share them uh, with anybody because I appreciate we had quite a canter through. But um, yes, let me know if there are any questions that you might have uh, that I can answer or anything specific to your industry or sector that I can answer. Um, yeah, and thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rachel. I have four questions actually, but I won't- Good grief. <laughs> Fine. Um, I'm just trying to get everybody back on my screen. One second. Why is it just that then, hey? Um, could you stop sharing perhaps? There we go. Oh, that helped. <laughs> I was trying to see everybody's faces. Um, and I just changed my view back to the gallery. There we go. Cool. Excellent. Does everyone find that useful? Good insights. How, if you've got a question, can you just let me know in the chat box that you've got a question? Not what it is, just that you have one. Or put, no, actually, just raise your hand. That's the best way, isn't it? Um, and I don't mean physically. I mean, use the, use the function to put your hand up on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> My instructions are great here, um, but I'll just crack, crack on with one question straight away, if that's all right. Um, firstly, what type of questions are they likely to ask us in these um, in these application forms? Wow. Okay. Uh, well, general business awards it will depend on the category that you're entering there will always be a question about you describing your business as it currently stands probably anywhere to 100 and 500 words on that the, the answer the questions then are very specific to the category so for instance if you're entering something about a growing business of the year then they'll talk about well, how have you grown your business how have you managed to achieve that um, um they will ask uh, specific questions around product service. They might ask questions around um, turnover, etc. If you're entering something like a client, a customer service or a client excellence award, then the questions will be very much focused around uh, how you deliver customer service, how you measure customer service improvements you've made, things like that. Um, so yes, it is so specific to the categories and the awards that you uh, enter. Uh, that it's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, cool. And then I guess within that the question, there's also like, what kind of foundations do you need to have in your business before you even think about going ahead and applying for an award? This is a question that I am quite often asked, particularly from startups or newer companies who will often think that they can't apply because perhaps their turnover isn't very big or um, they've only been trading for four months or something like this. And the answer I'll give is that we wrote for a client who was pre-trade, um, he hadn't started trading and he was highly commended in the Institute of Direct Director of the Year Awards because he entered the innovation category and they could see very clearly what the issue was in the marketplace that he was addressing and how he was going to be addressing it. He also had backing from investors, so they could see that financially there was money there to for him to trade from. Um, but he, he hadn't even started trading and was highly commended in an award. So I'd say to anybody, don't be put off 
um, if your turnover perhaps isn't what you would hope, or perhaps if you've had a loss in a year, or indeed if you're a new company. Don't be put off by that. Most awards will ask for you, for you to give an indication of turnover. But unless you're going for some of the very big national prestigious awards um, or the awards where you are being um, awarded on the growth of your business, where they will then drill down into the finances a lot more closely, quite a lot of them really do just have a look at that overarching bracket even of what you're, you say your turnover is. Um, so again, do if you do something well, if your clients say you do something well, there will probably be an award out there for it and have a look at it. Don't be put off by length of trading or, or your finances, because there are other things that, that awards will look for out there. OK, thank you. Louise, what's your question? Can I ask a question, but also um, do a comment and even share my screen possibly for a moment? I, I, I can do a good I can do a good sell for Rachel's um <laughs> services <laughs> because I um I've used this strategy exactly the strategy that Rachel's talking about very very successfully in my um heating business um we've won awards for the past nine years um mostly at a national level and that is a mark one of my main marketing strategies and for very clear reasons um, which time with what Rachel said um, is we're in an industry, we install heat pumps and people aren't confident. They don't know the technology and they still don't know the technology. We've been installing heat pumps for 15 years, but as we wanted to grow, we realized that we need to get that customer confidence, that external, um, what did you call it? I, 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 that's what we do, but I haven't used that phrase, external validation almost. The fact that we're good at what we do, somebody external and national is saying you're good at doing that. And that's how we've used awards. Um, and I, th I also think that the awards focuses in and almost focuses, it, almost ties in with what you do, Naomi, because to win awards, you need to really focus on where you're at, what you're good at, you know, your USP, your what, what problem are you solving? What problem are you solving? And on a client, on a like for us in the construction industry, in the heating industry, we have to show what, what innovative, um, problem we've solved for a client and I think that can be really useful when you're focusing on awards and that's where you know getting your head straight about what you're doing as a business then ties into applying for awards um, and that marketing yourself if I can I just share my screen for one minute and just show our what we do when we win an award I mean it's only a it just shows how we just where is it I've got it up somewhere there it is So this is a, this is last year we were double award winners at the National Heat Pump and ACR Awards, which is you know um, an important award in our industry, and that shows that for a company that works in a local area like ourselves, we've won big time at the national awards. So obviously I have a mar I have a marketing person that does I have a marketing person that does follows the procedure that that um, Rachel was talking about exactly. We do we do exactly that. But there's just purely by chance I came across this. Somebody rang me up and asked us to enter awards. That's before I even had a marketing department. So we sort of blundered through and we managed to win at the, at the, at the heating industry Oscars in, in like Park Lane in London in 2013, you know, Ooh. just by kind of fluke. And that set us on our journey for awards. But that is just, if people come into our showroom and they see our awards, huge, panel of thing of awards and they're like this company knows what they're talking about and it really does work yeah. but you do have to be organized it does take time you have to get into your mindset so that's why I would say using somebody like Rachel is great but what I wanted to ask Rachel was do you kind of train people to do it because what I can imagine a lot of small companies doing is kind of getting you to do it teach them and then they might start venturing to do it themselves so do you do that yeah, we do. We actually have um, in a couple of months time, we're launching our first online course to, to teach people to do it for themselves. Um, and basically, I'll be sharing 
everything and anything that I have, I know, have known, should know, will know uh, with folks because um, yeah, I completely understand not everybody is going to outsource to a company like us and that's fine. Um, but I do have a really big commitment to, to letting people know because I think even now where it is slightly more popular than it was four or five years ago, the percentage of businesses entering is woefully low. I speak as an ex judge of awards. Obviously, I don't do that anymore because of huge conflicts of interest. But I used to get genuinely excited when a new business name or a new person's name entered that I hadn't heard of before. And you shouldn't as a judge because, you know, it is just a new name. But it does make you sit up and you see, oh, I haven't heard of from Louise before. What does she do? Whereas one of my big challenges with clients that we work for for two, three, four, five years, and we're entering similar awards or the same category in awards, is how do we make sure the judge doesn't look and go, oh, good God, it's that Louise again. What's she saying this time? Yeah, we have to get over that really quickly with a real powerful opening piece within the guidelines of the awards, which are deliberately made to, to make everybody sound, you know, to fill in the form the same. So it is a challenge, but yeah, we will be teaching people how to do it for themselves. I think it's important that as many micro and SME businesses are able to, to take advantage of this. I think that's really good, but I really think there's quite a time there with what Naomi does to get people into that right mindset. And then they'll also be in the right mindset to enter awards is, it's very, so, Good tie in there, guys, I think. <laughs> That's where Rachel speaks for me. Because <laughs> it's very appropriate. It's very appropriate content. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Louise. Um, thank you. Do you think sometimes, Rachel, that there are um, some awards that are too big, too prestigious, that the people you'd go up against would be, considering we're all ex-entrepreneurs, one-man bands, maybe a few like contractors and suppliers around us, um, do you think there are some that it, we, it would be like, well, we wouldn't go in for that, award there because we're going to be up against big national companies and is there anything like that you'd consider it's 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 more of a challenge and i i i think when we do the, a lot of our clients start off with asking us to do the research out there and pull together an awards plan for them that's bespoke to them um and we always bear that in mind when we create them because it's about being ambitious but it's also it is a strategy and so we we, we are playing to win and sometimes that means entering possibly smaller awards, which will have a smaller pool of people where we know that we can be the Goliath in that pool. But then sometimes it is about entering the big national prestigious awards, many of which were on that, that those couple of slides I just put up, um, and being David to somebody's Goliath. I think the thing to think about that I have seen we don't typically work with huge clients. Yes, we have a, a couple of, of mega companies on our books, but usually they have the resource to deal with it in-house. However, where I've seen their um, weakness, or one of their weaknesses, a lot of the very large companies will give it to a junior uh, marketing person to do. Um, they won't have the, the strength necessarily of experience to go and batter on somebody's door to ask for the figures that they have to have until... Uh, until they get the right answer so sometimes their, their award entries are reasonably weak because they don't have the seniority within the business whereas um, a sole solopreneur or a, a, a family business with you know a small amount of staff it's often the person that, that runs the damn show that's entering it and they have a vested interest to do their best they have uh, the power and the personality and the, the, the passion to really get that story over what I would say to any business contemplating entering a big prestigious, whether it's an industry award or a, a national business award, is forget about the size of you and the size of people you've won before and look at the story you're telling. If you have a strong story to tell and to share, then I would say go for it. Have a go. Why not? You've got everything to win and very little to lose. Um, and quite often our smaller clients do win against the big, big boys because... As I said, you know, perhaps the person writing it hasn't got that seniority, doesn't have that full understanding, isn't terribly confident, um, or perhaps they just got a bit of a weak story. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, have a go. Don't be put off by the size of your business. Cool. And uh, Marion, you have a question. You can unmute. Yeah. I. You, that you, me? You, yes. Hi, hi, this is useful, Rachel, because I get, I'm not sure if everyone else gets these emails saying that um, you've been nominated for an award. 
and I just miss them as spam emails or very suspicious of them. How seriously should I take them or? So there's I one, I, I don't wish, the SME. Yes, I was just about to say, <laughs> there's, I don't wish to speak badly of any awards uh, because just because they might not be something that I particularly rate or my business rates, then you know I do have clients who, who have won the SME awards. This is different to the SME National Business Awards I spoke about. Right. The, 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 um, the, that, that little slide deck. They do tend, the one you're talking about, do tend to, uh, to have said that you have been nominated by somebody. There is a free or complimentary uh, ab ability to accept your nomination but they do offer uh, sponsor packages for you to be able to take your nomination um, and that's where they make their money right um, and it is a money-making exercise um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that we're all running well, most of us on this call are running businesses for profit um, what I look for when I'm putting award suggestions forward to my clients is is if they charge a fee I don't have a problem with that but I want to know, I want to feel as though that fee really is going into the quality of the, the, the process, the trophy that they're going to get, the experience that they're going to get when they're networking and, and meeting other nominees, finalists and their events do. I don't want to be feeling as though I'm being robbed um, because somebody you know, wants to make an extra £20,000 or £2 million on their turnover. Um, and I think, as I said in, in the little presentation, not all awards are equal. So what I would say is look for that credible, prestigious piece. How do you know whether it's credible and prestigious? Be guided by who has entered and won before. Quite often they'll talk about their finalists and their winners on site, on their website. But also have a look at their social media feeds um, where, where they've been discussed in the media. You know, so if there are awards that have got some coverage in the Times, Sunday Times, FT, insert magazine, industry magazine here, then they're probably going to be quite credible. Right. If they're sending emails saying that you've been nominated, in the main, there is a fee around that. And I would suggest they're perhaps not as credible as some others. That doesn't mean you shouldn't accept it. They do offer a complimentary acceptance bit. So I'd inquire about that and see what you get for, for no money. It is still a logo on your website at the end of the day. Mm. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And that ties into one of my questions where some of the awards are free and some of them are paid. And I guess some of the criteria you've just put there does sort of do your checking to see if it's worth it. And I suppose you just weigh way up having a nomination, a nominated award or a winning award, whether it's worth the cost, because by the time you put the application in and paid, and then you've gone to the event and paid for the ticket and you pay for the dress and the hotel and all of the different things or not a dress in most people's cases, maybe. <laughs> I get some funny comments. Um, then, yeah, then I guess it's like, okay, this is going to cost us a thousand pounds altogether, but what is the benefit of having association with that sitting there on, on the website, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I mean, things like um, the Lloyds Bank Business Awards have just changed their name or they changed it last year. The, the British Business Excellence Awards, they're a couple of hundred quid to enter. It'll be another couple of hundred quid to go to the event. However, um, whenever I've been in that room and whenever my clients have been in that room, even my clients who are allergic to networking, they all buzz about it because the quality of the connections in that room, you know, it's, it's, it's taking them up a level in terms of their peer network, in terms of the, the connections they've got, and they come out with business from it. So, yes, there is that, that uh, analysis to, to kind of make. However, awards like... Oh, I don't know. Last time I, I spoke to, so last year when the FSB and the IOD were running their awards, the IA either didn't charge for finalists to come to their award do, or if they did charge, it was a minimal amount, like 25 quid or something like that. There's no charge to enter. There are awards out there that don't charge to enter. There's a lot of them, and there's a, that are very credible. Great British Entrepreneur Award being another one, scale up awards. Um, uh, and and make sure that their um, fee for covering the event due is very small, or you get a free ticket as the finalist, you may have to pay if you wanted to take your other half with you or a work colleague or your co-director or whatever. So yeah, there's again, it's a whole range. There's some 
you know, some in the, the film and, and video industry, it's a thousand pounds to enter the award. God only knows what the event price would be. That, that's not the case. You can do this very cost effectively and you can do it um, uh, very effectively without spending a, a boatload of money on it. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we're going to go to Owen, whose name I have just learned is not Eugene or Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, I saw your message in the chat box, says so Shannon, and I read, oh, your name's actually Owen. We can call you Owen. <laughs> um, what's your question? I don't have a question. Uh, great, great uh, information. Um, I just wanted to say that, yeah, be careful. Like somebody said, they see the spam. Be careful because some of them are just money makers. They will charge you 1500 bucks or 3500 bucks, and it's for them to make money. Yeah, they give you a logo. But if something looks iffy, contact Rachel, ask what does she think about it, or put it in a, like in my group, we have 80,000 coaches. People put their, they say, what do you think about this? And then people say, yeah, run, it's a scam. Or yeah, it's real, but do your research. Don't just uh, accept any offer. Yeah, good point. And I'm always happy. I have clients, um, non-clients, friends, people I've met once on a networking thing. You know, end of people email me and ask, and and uh, I, I will always be honest and and give you a, give you a response back. Cool. Thank you. And um, Tamalos, what about you? You had a question. You have a question. Yes. Um... Rachel, um, specifically for myself, we are a carbon reporting company who deal with large corporates, big, big businesses. So it, it is SME, but it's also the large end. From your experience, where would you say we should be aiming ourselves? Because I'm, I'm doing this as a lead for my directors to where we should be looking to put ourselves for awards for the work that we're doing. What sector would you say roughly we would kind of fit into as in from your experience so if you're if i understand correctly correct me if I, I'm, I'm wrong but if i'm understanding you correctly you're basically looking at entering awards to be able to put you in front of other potential clients that are large smes or corporates exactly yeah so one of our biggest corporates is um the nhs and councils and, and wow yeah. <laughs> so yeah we, we've got we got supply chain last week so it's a it's a we, 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 work, we work with big companies, but small ones as well. Yeah. And we want that recognition that we know that it's that classic thing of, to kind of back your argument, as soon as we've got supply chain on board, everyone suddenly started to swarm around as like, yeah, flies around. You, you, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I think, I think for me, there's, if you were looking at a general business award because obviously there's the sustainability the environmentally friendly awards and categories which again i would urge you to look at because you know if you've got 100 businesses they could possibly all go for growing business but the ones that are green sustainable environmentally friendly to the degree that you get an award for are going to you know it might be 10 percent of them so you're going to be entering categories which will be far less contested than some of the other more obvious categories like businessman, businesswoman of the year, growing business, best business of the year, that kind of stuff. Everybody plays into those. So again, it's a strategy. Where can I play uh, to my strengths? Supply chain awards, absolutely. I was looking at a, not the NHS, there a council. Uh, one of my writers writes very well for third sector. I don't, I don't speak that language, but he does. And we're looking through their awards plan and there's quite a few uh, categories for suppliers into um, third sector organisations, not for profits, et cetera, et cetera. And again, not many people know about them because they'll look at them and go, oh, well, this was actually an education award. Oh, it's an education award. We're not in education. We supply into education, but there's a category there for suppliers but it's right at the bottom and people don't scroll down. So have a look at those. But of the general business ones, certainly things like um, scale up awards, uh, Great British Entrepreneur Awards, if your directors are happy to put their names forward, although it is a personal nod to them, you're getting your name in front of, your company name in front of the right kind of people. Um, the, the growing British awards, definitely have a look at that. I think that would be perfect for you. And the, the names in that room is like a, who's who of business, honestly, I was salivating, ridiculous. Um, and I have a look at the Lloyds Bank British Business Excellence Awards too, because whilst they do have a price tag to enter, they do do an early bird discount, so it's far more reasonable. 
but yes literally one of my clients was almost passed out because of the, the people in that room and he came away with business as well he came away with one contract that ended up being you know six figures in the end after they'd done the wound process um, but he wouldn't have got in to see them by knocking on their door cold calling or anything else but by meeting them at the bar you know shaking hands I'm a finalist you're a finalist hey let's let's catch up on LinkedIn and he kept the conversation going and he walked away with the contract six figures so brilliant see that's that help? That thing, yeah absolutely thank you for that Rachel much appreciated you know where I am I can answer anything else just let me know yeah about a link thank you do you have an online booking link so people can book a conversation I don't because I'm very very protective of my diary and I did try calendarly and it all went a bit crazy but what I would say is reach out to me on LinkedIn I'll put my profile thing in LinkedIn um, and uh, just direct message me there uh, and I will absolutely come back with uh, a list of um, um, times and dates or you come to me and tell me times and dates and, and we'll get a one-to-one -one booked in it's no problem at all Wonderful. Okay, cool. So let's just um, go to breakout rooms again. I think we've got a lot of uh, different things.